Now, the topics we're going to be covering are communication standards. We've got to talk about that first. We all understand the EPA has their standards. The SAE has their standards. Asia and Europe use the ISO standards. And sometimes we have exceptions to these standards. But the really welcome news is we have a new global standard called CAN. We've got to talk about the principles of each one of these standards because they all operate slightly different and show you the waveforms so you can evaluate correct operation of each one of these communication circuits. And we're talking about diagnosing communications. We're going to be connecting equipment to analyze communication circuits and see if they're working the way they're supposed to. And we've got to identify communication systems from diagrams. And we're going to have to show you how to do that. And using diagrams to isolate modules and identify failure patterns so you can make revi viable repair decisions. Now, just as a reminder of what communications is, we all know every time we hook the scan tool up, we're communicating with the vehicle. But you also have to remember, just to start the car these days, we have to have modular module communications when we have a security system so it can pass the information to the engine control system to allow the car to start that it has passed its security scrutiny. So there's a lot of cases we're seeing these days of people not understanding why a vehicle will not start and it comes back to communications or loss of communications. Now we're going to be talking about a lot of different systems and a lot of different numbers, but it's all going to start making sense. So rather than get into all of this, I want to talk about a few things and give you some warnings. There are exceptions. We're going to be talking about the standards and every now and then we'll show you a very definite exception that should not be there. But the great news is finally there's going to be one global, global standard that brings Europe Asia and the U.S. with the same setup, and it's called CAN. It's represented by the ISO 15031. This is the rules and regulations as they're published in the Federal Register by the EPA on June 17, 2003. Giving everybody plenty of warning, down here in the red box at the bottom, we say the EPA is requiring that commencing in the 2008 model year, the only allowable protocol will be the new communications protocol, ISO 15765. That's the newest version of CAN that we just talked about. It was de uh, adopted December 14th in 2001 by the ISO. So now we're going to have everybody the same. Some of the other standards that you're going to see violated occasionally is the standards for what is going to be allowed on the ALDL connector. You see some of these like three that say discretionary. Discretionary means that any car manufacturer can use that pin for whatever they want. It doesn't have to be there. It's also called proprietary in some cases. We're going to be showing you each one of these pins and how they relate to each one of those standards we've been talking about, even though they're already listed in here. Here's some of the standards for Europe and Asia. Two predominant things that are there is ISO 9141-2 and ISO 14230-4. That's for the KPW 2000 or KW 2000. Under both of those, DCL pin 7 is the K-line, which is the communications channel between scan tools and the vehicles. Pin 15 is the L-line, which is the initialization to start communications. More and more, we're seeing manufacturers use a single wire, pin 7, and do the initialization on the K-line and opt out of using pin 15. Here's an example on a Toyota. This is a 2005 Corolla. Here's the K-line. Notice it's going a number of places. We've got the circuit highlighted in red. One of the things we want you to understand is you're going to have to get diagrams like this to understand it because if we hit any one of these modules hooked to this could be the cause of our communications problem. The other circuit on here is the L line. This particular Toyota uses the L line to initialize communications and you see it goes not as many places as we had before. It's got a smaller area. There's fewer modules it's going to talk to and initialize. These are the ISO standards for those two, for that bus. ISO 9141-2 is going to have 
the K line is going to idle high, which it says here is going to be V battery, approximately 12 volts. It talks about the length of the message, which is fairly short. ISO 14, 230 is KWP 2000 protocol. It's very much like 9141, only it has bigger words and it uses a faster initialization. At the bottom is the great news, the final version of CAN, and it's going to be on pin 6 and 14. This is for CAN C, high speed CAN, used to communicate with scan tools specifically. Now, in the U.S., we use SAE specifications, J1850. Now, there's a 41.6 kilobaud pulse width modulated two wire differential approach. And there's a 10.4 kilobaud variable pulse width single wire approach. Now, the single wire approach can be quite long and can occupy or utilize 32 different modules. And when we break it down, we find that here is starting to be exceptions. We said you're going to see exceptions. Well, we got a variable pulse width. GM uses it as a single wire, class two. Chrysler uses a two wire variation of 9141-2. One of the problems with diagnosing communications these days is all the exceptions. We're going to tell you about them and we'll show you each one. Then the other one we talked about is the pulse width modulated. Ford uses it, the SCP. It's a balanced two wire on two different ones. What you're going to be looking at all through here is scope patterns. So we can tell you how to go through and diagnose and verify the circuit by looking for the right pattern. And we're going to tell you some important things about what makes up different aspects of this and hopefully be able to give you some diagnostic direction. We've gotten through the introduction to the communication systems and covered a lot of things. We've separated out the diagnostic section. So go to the introduction to communications diagnostics next. We separate it out so you can get to it easily for future reference.